Welcome to our series on the biographies of the Presidents of the United States. Join us as we embark on a journey through the lives and legacies of the individuals who have shaped the course of American history. Franklin Pierce, the 14th President of the United States, served from the 4th of March, 1853, to the 4th of March, 1857. He was born on November 23, 1804, in Hillsborough, New Hampshire, into a politically active family. Pierce's father served in the American Revolution and held various public offices, instilling in his son an early interest in politics and public service. Pierce received an excellent education, attending Phillips Exeter Academy and Bowdoin College, where he graduated fifth in his class in 1824. After completing his studies, he studied law and was admitted to the bar in 1827. Pierce soon established a successful legal practice in Hillsborough, New Hampshire. Pierce's political career began in the New Hampshire legislature, where he served as a state representative from 1829 to 1833. He then served in the United States House of Representatives from 1833 to 1837, followed by a term in the United States Senate from 1837 to 1842. Pierce's political rise was aided by his strong oratorical skills and his ability to connect with people on a personal level. During his time in Congress, Pierce aligned himself with the Democratic Party and quickly became a prominent figure within the party. He was a staunch supporter of President Andrew Jackson's policies and embraced the Democratic Party's platform of limited government intervention and states' rights. Pierce's presidency was marked by a desire to maintain national unity and avoid the escalating tensions over slavery. However, his attempts at compromise often exacerbated the divisions in the country. One of the most controversial acts of his administration was the signing of the Kansas-Nebraska Act in 1854. This act repealed the Missouri Compromise of 1820, allowing for the expansion of slavery into new territories based on popular sovereignty. The passage of the act led to violence and bloodshed in the Kansas Territory and further intensified the conflict between the North and the South. Internationally, Pierce aimed to expand American influence and trade. His administration negotiated the Treaty of Kanagawa with Japan in 1854, opening up trade and diplomatic relations with the previously isolated nation. He also sought to acquire additional territory for the United States, including Cuba and the Gadsden Purchase from Mexico. Pierce faced considerable opposition and criticism during his presidency, particularly from members of his own party. Many Northern Democrats turned against him due to his support of the Kansas-Nebraska Act and his perceived pro-slavery leanings. The growing sectional tensions and the divisive issues of slavery and states' rights further undermined Pierce's popularity. After leaving office in 1857, Pierce retired from politics and largely withdrew from public life. He witnessed the outbreak of the American Civil War and the subsequent challenges faced by the nation he once led. Although he initially opposed secession, he eventually sided with the Confederacy, which further tarnished his reputation. Franklin Pierce's presidency is often viewed as a period of missed opportunities and failed attempts at compromise. His efforts to preserve the Union ultimately contributed to its fracture, and his support for pro-slavery policies strained relations between the North and the South. Despite his early promise and strong political skills, Pierce's presidency is generally regarded as one of the least successful in American history. James Buchanan, the 15th President of the United States, served from the 4th of March, 1857, to the 4th of March, 1861. He was born on the 23rd of April, 1791, in Cove Gap, Pennsylvania, into a family of Scottish and Irish descent. Buchanan's early life was marked by his dedication to education and a strong interest in public service. Buchanan's political career began in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, where he served from 1814 to 1816. He later represented Pennsylvania in the United States House of Representatives from 1821 to 1831, followed by a term in the United States Senate from 1834 to 1845. Buchanan quickly gained a reputation as a skilled legislator and a staunch supporter of states' rights and limited federal government. 
Throughout his political career, Buchanan held various diplomatic positions, including serving as minister to Russia in 1832 and as Secretary of State under President James K. Polk from 1845 to 1849. His diplomatic experience and extensive knowledge of foreign affairs contributed to his appeal as a presidential candidate. Buchanan's presidency was marked by deep divisions over the issue of slavery and growing tensions between the North and the South. He sought to maintain peace and unity by advocating for a middle ground approach to the issue. However, his attempts at compromise often backfired and further exacerbated the divisions in the country. One of the most significant events during Buchanan's presidency was the Dred Scott decision. In 1857, the Supreme Court issued a ruling stating that African Americans, whether enslaved or free, were not citizens and had no legal rights. The decision fueled outrage in the North and intensified the conflict over slavery. Buchanan's handling of the growing secession crisis was also widely criticized. As states in the South began to secede from the Union following Abraham Lincoln's election in 1860, Buchanan took a passive approach, asserting that states did not have the right to secede but also claiming that the federal government had no authority to stop them. His inaction and failure to take decisive measures to preserve the Union weakened his standing and further eroded confidence in his leadership. As Buchanan's term drew to a close, several southern states had already seceded, and the nation stood on the brink of civil war. Despite his efforts to maintain peace, his presidency ended with the inauguration of Abraham Lincoln in March 1861 and the subsequent outbreak of the American Civil War. After leaving office, Buchanan retired to his estate in Pennsylvania and largely avoided public life. He published a memoir in 1866, providing his perspective on the events leading up to the Civil War, but it did little to redeem his legacy. James Buchanan's presidency is often regarded as one of the least successful in American history. His inability to effectively address the mounting tensions over slavery and his passive response to the secession crisis further divided the nation. His presidency serves as a stark reminder of the challenges faced by leaders during the time of intense political turmoil and sectional strife. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, served from the 4th of March, 1861, until his assassination on the 15th of April, 1865. He is one of the most revered figures in American history, known for his leadership during the American Civil War and his efforts to abolish slavery. Lincoln's life and presidency are marked by his unwavering commitment to preserving the Union and advancing the cause of freedom and equality. Abraham Lincoln was born on the 12th of February, 1809, in a log cabin in Hardin County, Kentucky. His family later moved to Indiana and settled in Illinois when Lincoln was a young boy. Lincoln's early life was marked by hardship and poverty, and he received only a limited formal education. However, he possessed a keen intellect and a voracious appetite for learning. Lincoln's political career began in the Illinois State Legislature, where he served from 1834 to 1842. He then served a single term in the United States House of Representatives from 1847 to 1849. During this time, Lincoln developed a reputation as an eloquent speaker and a skilled debater, particularly on the issue of slavery. In 1858, Lincoln emerged as a prominent figure in national politics when he challenged Stephen A. Douglas for the Illinois Senate seat. The famous Lincoln-Douglas debates showcased Lincoln's mastery of rhetoric and his opposition to the expansion of of slavery. Although he lost the Senate race, the debates elevated Lincoln's national profile and positioned him as a leading figure in the newly formed Republican Party. In 1860, Lincoln secured the Republican Party's presidential nomination. The country was deeply divided over the issue of slavery, and Lincoln's election as a Republican candidate intensified the tensions between the North and the South. Several southern states seceded from the Union in response to his election, forming the Confederate States of America. Lincoln took office on the 4th of March, 1861, with the nation on the brink of civil war. His presidency was dominated by the American Civil War, a conflict that would ultimately claim the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans. Lincoln's primary goal throughout the war was to preserve the Union, but he also recognized the need to address the institution of slavery. In 1862, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring that all slaves in Confederate-held territory were to be set free. 
While the proclamation did not immediately free all slaves, it fundamentally transformed the nature of the war, making it a struggle for both union and emancipation. The proclamation also laid the groundwork for the eventual passage of the 13th Amendment, which permanently abolished slavery throughout the United States. As the war progressed, Lincoln faced numerous challenges, both on the battlefield and within his own administration. He navigated the complexities of military strategy, appointed and dismissed generals, and worked tirelessly to maintain morale and support for the Union cause. Lincoln's steadfast leadership and unwavering resolve were crucial to the Union's ultimate victory. On the 9th of April, 1865, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered, effectively ending the Civil War. However, Lincoln's triumph was short-lived. Just six days after the Confederate surrender, he was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth while attending a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. His assassination shocked the nation and plunged it into mourning. Abraham Lincoln's legacy is indelibly tied to his leadership during the time of national crisis. His unwavering commitment to preserving the Union, his actions to end slavery, and his visionary leadership continue to inspire and resonate today. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, delivered in 1863, eloquently captured the essence of American democracy in the ongoing struggle for equality, reminding the nation that it was government of the people, by the people, for the people. Andrew Johnson, the 17th President of the United States, served from the 15th of April, 1865, to the 4th of March, 1869. He assumed the presidency following the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and played a pivotal role in the early years of Reconstruction. Johnson's presidency was marked by intense political battles and conflicts with Congress as the nation sought to heal and rebuild after the American Civil War. Andrew Johnson was born on the 29th of December, 1808, in Raleigh, North Carolina. He grew up in poverty and had limited access to formal education. Johnson's early life was marked by hardship, and he worked as a tailor's apprentice before eventually establishing his own tailor shop. Johnson's entry into politics came through his involvement in local government in Tennessee. He served as an alderman and mayor of Greenville before being elected to the Tennessee House of Representatives in 1835. He later served in the United States House of Representatives from 1,843 to 1,853 and the United States Senate from 1,857 to 1,862. Johnson's political career was characterized by his support for the rights of the common man and his opposition to the planter class. In 1864, President Abraham Lincoln chose Johnson, a Southern Democrat, as his running mate on the National Union Party ticket. The party sought to bridge the divide between the North and the South during the Civil War. The ticket was successful, and Johnson became vice president in March 1865. Just over a month into his vice presidency, Johnson assumed the presidency following Lincoln's assassination. At the time, the nation was grappling with the immense challenges of Reconstruction and the task of re integrating the southern states into the Union. Johnson's approach to Reconstruction was lenient towards the southern states, earning him the label of a soft on the South president. He implemented a plan known as Presidential Reconstruction, which aimed to quickly restore the southern states to the Union with minimal federal intervention. Under his plan, most Confederate leaders and officials were granted amnesty, and states were allowed to establish new governments and draft new constitutions without significant oversight. However, Johnson's leniency towards the South and his opposition to radical Republican proposals for racial equality and voting rights for freed slaves quickly put him at odds with Congress. The conflict between Johnson and Congress escalated, leading to a bitter impeachment battle. In 1868, the House of Representatives impeached Johnson, accusing him of violating the Tenure of Office Act by removing Secretary of War Edwin M. Stanton from his position without the Senate's approval. The Senate trial ended in acquittal, falling just one vote short of the two-thirds majority required for conviction. Despite surviving impeachment, Johnson's presidency was largely ineffective. He faced considerable opposition from Congress, which limited his ability to implement his policies. The tensions between Johnson and Congress paralyzed the government and hindered the progress of Reconstruction. After leaving office in 1869, Johnson returned to Tennessee and briefly re-entered politics. 
He served as a United States Senator from 1875 until his death on 31 July, 1875. Andrew Johnson's presidency remains a subject of historical debate and controversy. While some view him as a champion of states' rights and a defender of the Constitution, others criticize his lenient policies towards the southern states and his failure to secure lasting civil rights and protections for freed slaves. Despite the challenges he faced and his controversial legacy, Johnson played a significant role in shaping the early years of Reconstruction and the path of the nation after the Civil War.